legendary Naughty by Nature. Mm, thank you. Absolutely. Naughty 90s. Naughty 90s. So you grew up in Jersey. Mm -hmm. Born and raised. What part? Born in Newark, raised in East Stars, but they like right next to each other. All the family is from all parts there. Irvington, anything connected, you know. Fatal, rest in peace, Hussein, Montclair right there, yeah. all surrounding everything orange, you feel what I'm saying? Everything around is Jersey. From north to top, we won one tribe. Now, Jersey was pretty crazy back then. Crazy now. Crazy now. Has it improved or is it pretty much the same? Nah, I'm saying it's like, back in the days, it used to be like codes and rules and stuff. And like now it's like, how can I explain it? Like, if you're in the wild or anything else, like, if you do studies, like, we all are animals. We all are part of the earth. If you look like in Africa or anything else, if when they're killing the rhinos and the elephants for their tusks and they kill the male, the bull, the leader of the family, when you see when the mothers is there, the little ones run wild because the father ain't there. He say one word, bow's there. With them, they just is not there. So it's the same thing with... The way we are as people, when you got the majority of the heads of the family, which is the male, which is either not in the house or dead or locked up, then the little ones is out there making their own rules. They don't respect the elders or anything no more. And for the humans and what we do is like, I say it's way worse because for one, it's way more guns. Yeah. It's way more drugs. Back in the days, you had weed. You know, you drunk your 40 ounces and, and, your, and your little drinks. But now they like on real hardcore like drugs you feel what i'm saying so it's like by the time you really wake up you be in prison not knowing what you did forever because a drug is making you do some things that you wouldn't normally do if you was just on weed or some drink you feel yeah me? now i mean you mentioned you know families and fathers and so forth now, i remember you had that one verse you said never knew my dad mother fuck the fag ghetto bastard ghetto bastard mm -hmm. exactly so you never knew your dad nah nah you, you never met him no, I met him when I was 12, yeah. and for a little while, then he moved out, and I didn't know where he went, you feel me? And then I had a show on VH1 um, with my lady called uh, Couples Therapy with Dr. Jen and anything else, and after 30 years, I met him again for the first time. Wow. You feel me? So, like, growing up, though, I had to basically, my mom's work, she was a, a nurse, so she had different hours, and when she did like 3 to 11, it's like, we're coming home from school. My little brother Diesel, he was four years younger than me, so basically we was taking care of ourselves in the household, and by 11 o'clock coming in, you know, it ain't really no supervision, so yeah. we out doing what we doing and stuff. So, But it was a different thing because where we was from, it was like, if you was 12 years old, 13, you can't go nowhere and say, yo, give me a bag of weed if you had the money, they do it. they like, look, if you don't get, get your ass in the house, we ain't. it's like nowadays, it's like you part of the team, and the younger you are, the more you somebody that could be a mule or just part of this, and you're into so much more. When we came up, it was like Boy Scouts. It was the Rams, the Pee Wee League, which was football, baseball, basketball, all of that. It was rec centers and everything else. It's like... They wonder what's going on. It's like now the kids don't have no type of recreation or anything. Yeah. So that was one reason when, like Jersey, I guess, became like the stolen car capital. These kids was just stealing cars for fun. It was nothing else to do. Yeah, like, like the movie New Jersey Drive. Yeah, well, that was bullshit. <laughs> okay. That was really good. Look at Vice Land, Mike Williams, shout out to yeah. It's like that was like not interpreted well. And it's like it's, 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 it's really was just a shame because, like I said, it ended up, they wasn't stealing cars to chop them up for money, to get parts, to do anything. They was doing it just to have something to do because there was nothing else to do. Yeah. Now, I mean, growing up, you talked about at certain points you were homeless, you were sleeping in the park. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And now what, what, what exactly happened to, to put you in that type of spot? Well, actually, my mom, she just wasn't no joke. She was like, you can't abide by my rules, you get out. So it was like when I'm 16, 17, hard hair. You know, sometimes you gotta get hard love. So it's like when my mom said get out, I left. And you know, she think, oh, you're gonna come back and anything else. But I, I didn't come back. And that's when I just really started hustling hard. I was selling little punk little bags of weed and anything else. But then in the 80s, that's when like the crack ever came in and everything yeah. else. So 
With me, I just had a gang of clothes at different homies' house. When they moms go to work, I go shit shave and bathe. Well, I wasn't shaving them, but bathe and change clothes. Yeah. But I was basically living in a park hustling up the hill and down the hill, all the way from top of the hill, 6th Ave, all the way to Raleigh Park up, up top. You feel me? So I just knew so many people from all over because I rhymed as well. So everybody knew Tiny T. That was my name first. Tiny <laughs> T Treachery. You yeah. feel me? So they knew me all over. So if I had shit left over from one spot, I could go to another spot and I just had family. A lot of people couldn't do that because it was like you either from up the hill or down the hill and down the hill further ended up being Newark. Mm -hmm. So it was like you had to be, but I could float all over. Plus I had family in Newark, family in East Orange. So I always used to get off my packs. Yeah. So you feel me? So it was like, I ain't gotta listen to moms no more. Yeah. You feel me? I'm, I'm out here, I'm doing me and this like, I'm feeling love in the streets. Yeah. You feel me? I'm feeling love. I'm feeling comfortable here. I'm feeling like this could be me because you don't know at that age consequences. You feel what I'm saying? Sure. Now, I mean, when you talk about selling crack, a lot of, a lot of shit comes with that. Mm -hmm. I mean, what do you think was the worst thing you went through during that era? Crack was like a whole different charge. You get more time. So we just sold it. The fiends had to do it. But probably the worst thing was like, when we out there, probably worst times like when they shot up, when stick up kids came. Mm. And they they wasn't even really coming to stick shit up. They started shooting from the corner. Oh, so they were just gonna shoot. They was like, oh, they, they, they got the hot block. Ah, right, ain't nobody saying with a stash. Da, da, da. That's the first time we saw like assault rifles. We had little 38s and motherfucking like, like what the, for a little four five, what the fuck is that? <laughs> You feel me? KG got skinned in the neck. Oh, wow. Just by being outside, they shot up like pregnant girl in the car, homie, boom. Luckily, nobody died, but it was like a wake up call to us like, we got to get in the game now. Yeah. Or get out of it because it's some real live savages out here. Well, because you talked about you were like on the biggest drug block. Yeah. In your, in your area. One of, yeah. It was like, from down the hill, it was 18, 15, 6 half, top of the hill. All that, we ran all of that. And we had homies that was in different, but 18th Street, how we end up like really being like one of the biggest because every other block looked like paying full. Big gold chains, they yeah. had the BMWs, the VBSs, the scooters, the cars. And I used to always kick it on, on the porch with... OG, rest in peace, old man Dave, he like, was like 67 years old in the wheelchair. And they're like, why you always just sit on the porch with the old man? I said, man, you know how, you know how much Jules is with that, that guy right there? You know how much he know? He knows so much. It's like everything going in cycle and circle. He got knowledge right there somewhere. So what was going on, the cops used to come and like, we like, how the fuck do the cops come around go right to who got the pack and right in the alley, whichever alley, and, and go to the stash. So old man was saying, man, let me tell you something, little, little, little. He was calling me son, son. Let me tell you something, son, son. It's one of these motherfuckers in this motherfucking block. Might be one of them old bitches up there somewhere. They telling them what y'all wearing and when y'all coming in and out. And y'all wearing a little gold chains and anything else, so they, they know don't none of y'all got jobs. Boom, I said. We gonna have a meeting. <laughs> so we all met the fuck up. I said, let me tell you something. Everybody out here right now. All the team, everybody from, from your socks to your drawers to your t-shirts, everybody come out this motherfucker. All black every day. Dirty. Take them chains off. When we go out, we had the Gucci suits. We had all that. We go party yeah. on this fucking block right here. Everybody. Dirty as fuck. You got your little hoopties or anything else with little rims and the Take that shit the fuck on another block. We started doing that. The cops came around. What they got on? All black. <laughs> the babies, the kids, the grandma. Everybody wearing all black. <laughs> we dirty. They thought it was like a fiend block. Right. So they thought you were the fiends. Yeah. And then they hit every other block. Yeah. Because they like, oh, that's a drug block. They thought this block was just a dirty block. 
Yeah. So that's why every time they started raiding, the feds came and raided everybody else's block, our block was just prospering.